My dad gave my brother $120,000 and left me with nothing. Now he wants me to bail them out after my brother's gambling problem. I, 21M, come from a broken home, unfortunately. My parents divorced when I was in middle school because my dad had an affair with his secretary. Of course, I found out about that much later, when I was a little bit older. But the problems in my parents' marriage had always been there. And even as a child, I had picked up on the tension that always seemed to be there. So they were together, but I could tell that they were not really in love, and there was definitely something off. When I saw other parents with their children, I could tell that they were a happy family, but that was not the case with my family. I also have an older brother, and one might think that coming from a broken family would have made our relationship stronger, but that's not what happened. So no, no, unfortunately, my brother is a jerk, and for some reason, he always seemed to have it in for me. So right from when we were kids, he tried to put me down all the time and would bully me relentlessly. So and that led to our parents taking sides as well. My mom was mostly on my side while my dad always supported my brother. Eric, my brother, 25M, was not a good guy at all and was literally the worst person to grow up with. He was the meanest kid ever and would never let go of any opportunity to take on me with his friends. I was a lot smaller than him, even physically, so I could never do anything except run to my mother. And that made me look even worse because it earned me the label of a mama's boy. My mother would always reprimand him, but it didn't help because my dad would always take his side and tell my mother that I needed to learn how to play rough because that's how I would become a guy. But I didn't want to learn how to be a guy, I just wanted to live in peace. And for some reason, my dad and my brother just seemed to hate the idea of me having a peaceful life. They would constantly try to bother me one way or another. My mother would try to protect me, but there was only so much she could do because it wasn't like she could constantly keep an eye on us while also doing all the household chores. She was a stay-at-home mom and she had a lot on her plate, what with raising us and also keeping the house in order, so it was impossible for her to always prevent me from getting bullied by my brother or my dad. That's how things were for me growing up and with time. I learned to accept it and just let it go instead of constantly complaining about it and fighting against it. Then, when I was in eighth grade, my mother sat me down and told me that she was separating from my dad, and at that point I was old enough to understand that they had their reasons and this was for the best. She didn't tell me the exact reason why they were getting divorced, but I just assumed that it must have been because my dad was a horrible guy to be married to and she just had enough, which is why she was leaving. It wasn't until much later, when I was in high school, that I found out the real reason why she had left. Apparently, my mother had found text messages on my dad's phone between him and his secretary, and that was the last straw for her because she had been putting up with enough already, but she couldn't accept infidelity. So we were having a heart-to-heart -heart chat that day, and she told me that the reason that my dad had never liked me was because he hadn't even wanted a second child. But she had refused to give me up and had even threatened him with divorce. He was just setting up his business at the time, and they were short on money. So they were already having a hard time, paying all the bills and having one child was also expensive for them at the time. Another child would be difficult to handle. So but my mother put her foot down and said that she was not going to give me up and would definitely go through with the pregnancy. They did have a babysitter at the time because even though my mother was working before I was born, my mother suggested that she would continue to work and would just borrow money from her. Dad, my grandpa, until my dad's business took off, and then they would return everything. But my dad was not on board with the idea of taking money from his father-in-law, so he told my mother that the only way he would agree to a second child was if she quit her job and stayed at home. He expected my mother to disagree with it and terminate the pregnancy, but my mother didn't do so. And that's how things started falling apart between them. My mother acknowledged that both of them could have dealt with the problem better. But the way that my father had started resenting me and harming me after I was born made her feel terrible. And that's why she didn't ever try to reconcile with him. She told me that the fact that I had such a terrible childhood was partly her fault and apologized to me for it because she felt like she should have left sooner but didn't because she believed that it would have a negative impact on us. Unfortunately, the decision to stay in that marriage is what made things much worse, and ultimately, she had to leave, but after getting hurt in the worst way possible. And part of her still loves my dad, even after I was born and he had started to treat me really badly. She had held out hope that maybe he would change, but that never happened, and she was just disappointed time again. So the distance between them just kept growing, and he ended up cheating.
I love my mother, I really do, but I honestly think that she could have been honest with me about a lot of things way earlier than she chose to. Because she only told me about all of these things when I was in my final year of high school, but they got divorced when I was in middle school and unfortunately, I had to spend every weekend with my dad. My parents had worked out a custody arrangement where I would spend the weekends with my dad, and my brother would spend the weekends with my mom. It worked because I hated spending time with my dad, and I hated my brother even more, so I had made it very clear in the divorce that I did not want to be with my dad at the same time as my brother, because that would be a total nightmare. My mother agreed with it, so she got her lawyer to work out the terms, and even though my dad was not happy about it because he believed that it was important for me to bond with my brother, I thought that it was impossible for me to bond with a monster like him. So thankfully, my mother had taken my side and worked out an arrangement where I had to spend the bare minimum of my time with my dad and my brother, and I mostly just grew up with her. But despite that, we would spend the holidays together, and that would always be terrible because, after his divorce, my brother started dating, his secretary and my mother weren't able to stand it. He had the good sense never to bring her around when we would meet for the holidays, but my mother knew the truth and she hated it. So the holidays would always be tense, but we had to get through it somehow because my dad wanted it and my mother had to agree because she had already put a lot of distance between my dad, my brother, and me and this was the bare minimum that she could do so we could still at least pretend that we were family and were related by blood. And that is why we would try to get along, but that was just all on the surface. Deep down, None of us really liked each other, and both my brother and I had chosen which parent we liked more. And so had our parents, which is really not right. So I guess it's safe to say that my family was pretty dysfunctional and I had a very weird childhood. Nevertheless, I continued to stay in touch with my dad, even after I found out the truth in my senior year because my mother had told me that apparently, he was the one who was going to pay for me to go to college, so I had to be on good terms with him. And that's the reason why she had never said anything about these things beforehand, because she was afraid that I would get into a fight with him, and then lose my college fund. My mother had only started working after the reverse, so she had not saved nearly enough to be able to afford the kind of college that I wanted to go to, so my dad was my best bet. It was really hard for me, but I tried my best to stay on good terms with him. So it all turned out to be pretty futile though, because apparently I never even had a college fund to begin with, and my dad continued to mistreat me, and talk down to me. But a couple of months before I was supposed to graduate, a few of my friends and I decided to start our own business instead of going to college. So it was a huge risk that we were taking because all of us were just 18 and had very little prior experience, but we were really passionate about what we wanted to do. And we didn't think that going to college would increase our chances of getting successful quicker. It was just a leap of faith that we would have to take. I was the one who had the idea of starting our own business. And even though we were just joking about it, at first we quickly made up our minds that this was what we wanted to do. It was going to be a clothing and accessories business because we kind of wanted to revolutionize the space since most of the clothing and accessory stores in our neighborhood were mostly either mass-produced products from big corporations or small businesses that didn't really understand how teenagers wanted to dress and look. So my friends and I had been having a really difficult time finding stuff to wear that we could be our authentic selves in and we got stuck wearing either really old stuff that we had to thrift, or ended up looking like our dads. We had been joking about it, but it occurred to us that a lot of other people our age might have felt the same way, so that's how our brand was born. And I'm proud to say that we have expanded considerably since then. And I'm glad that I took that risk without bothering to go to college because I think we did pretty well for ourselves. It was me and three of my friends who brainstormed for months and came up with a business plan. It was already decided that the two of us would try to design the clothes, which would not be difficult, since most of us were already pretty good at art and stuff like that, and were interested in fashion. And the other two would focus more on the business aspect of things. So I was supposed to start looking for investors, which was going to be difficult, because we were just a bunch of 18-year-old teenagers with barely any experience and no college degree. We didn't have a fashion degree and neither did we have a business degree, all we had was passion. It sounds idealistic, but we were stubborn and had already made up our minds. For a few weeks, I didn't tell anybody about this, but then I couldn't keep it a secret from my mother any longer, so I told her everything. She was kind of nervous about it at first and insisted that I at least go to college and get a degree, but I told her that I was really sure about this and I just wanted her to support me. 
So she came around, but she told me that it would be very difficult to make my father agree to help me out with this, because he already didn't like the idea of guys having typically feminine interests. And he, if you found out that I was dabbling in the fashion industry, he would probably never speak to me again. But I needed money and my friends and I were being declined by every investor. Most of them didn't even entertain a meeting with us before saying no because nobody wanted to bet on us, and understandably so. The only people who would even touch our business would be friends and family, so that's who we had to rely on, and I understood that very quickly. So about two months ago before I was supposed to graduate, I decided to talk to my father about money for my business. My friends had already spoken to their parents and everybody had agreed, albeit after a lot of pleading and begging, to invest in our business and help us out. So my dad would be the toughest nut to crack, and I already knew it. Of course, first I had to tell him that I hadn't have applied to any colleges at all because my friends and I had started working on our own brand, and that's what we wanted to go ahead with, and that's what I needed my college fund money for. So when I first told him about it, that I was not going to college, he didn't seem to care and said that he was fine with whatever I did. But when I told him that I would need the money from my fund to fund my startup, he told me that he didn't have any money set aside for me because he was serious, not even kidding about not caring about what I did. So that was when I found out that I never even had a college fund to begin with because everything that he had, he had already spent on my brother who went to medical school. So my brother started four years before me and I knew that he went to medical school. I also knew that it would be expensive, but I figured that my dad's business was doing well so he would of course be able to pay for both my brother and I to go to college. What I didn't realize was that my brother was not just taking money from my dad for school, he was also taking loads of money from him otherwise to have a fun lifestyle when he was supposed to be studying to become a doctor and my dad was happy to help him. He told me that he had written a check to my brother around the time that he left for medical school and given him his entire life savings that he had been setting aside. It was a huge amount, almost $120,000, and he had just given it all away. Since then, he had been living off of his salary, and he didn't mind it one bit. He had also assumed that I would not be going to college, something that he was right about, but for all the wrong reasons, which is why he had never bothered to save for me or even tell me that I didn't have a college fund. He explained to me that day that he just believed that Eric was his brighter son, and he had never expected that somebody as stupid as me would even bother to want to go to college, let alone get in anywhere. And I had proved him right by not applying and deciding that I was going to start a business because apparently, this is exactly what he had expected of me. I thought that he was kidding or something but after a few minutes, I realized that he was being serious, and he had actually given his entire life savings to Eric to spend. So when he had nothing for me, I completely flipped out at him, because not only was I upset that he didn't even think to set aside any money for me, he had called me stupid and had called Eric bright. So that day I finally let loose and told him exactly what I thought of him because I just couldn't take it anymore. I had expected him to help me out just a little, and I was going to pay him back once my business started making money, but he couldn't even do this much for me because he was just that selfish and hated me enough. I was inconsolable because even though I had always known that my dad didn't like me and he liked Eric way more, I hadn't seen this coming. He we got into a massive fight and that was pretty the last day that I spoke to my father because after that I had nothing left to say to him. During the fight we had pretty much said everything that we had to say and there was nothing more to add to it. I decided that I was not going to see my dad ever again and he was fine with it because he realized that no matter how much he wanted to, I was not going to turn out like Eric. After that, I pretty much just moved in with my mom and it was hard to let my friends down and tell them that my dad would not be giving us money to start the business but they understood. My mother was the one who helped me out, she gave me some money herself and borrowed the rest from my grandparents, something which I had been trying to avoid because they're old and I wanted them to save money for emergency medical expenses or whatever. So they were glad to come on board as investors and mentors, and I'm happy that they decided to bet on me. I'm also pretty sure that they are glad that they decided to do that, because our brand is doing great and we are as profitable as it can get. We are pretty popular among teens, and it's really difficult to believe how hard we had to work to get here and how far we have come, but it's true. So I would say that my brand is a lot more successful than my dad's business, and I'm sure that was a bitter pill for him to swallow. But fast forward to two weeks ago, something weird happened, and my dad called me up after almost three years of not talking to each other. And surprisingly, 
This call was about Eric because he had bad news for me. He started off by congratulating me on the success of my business. I thought that he would finally acknowledge how wrong he was, but he told me that they actually needed my help. He said that Eric had completed his residency recently, but he was in huge trouble because he had started gambling when he was living away from home, and my dad recently found out that he was in debt. It was not even a small amount, a significant amount of money, and he had people looking for him because he needed to cough up the money. Eric had to come back home within days of finishing his residency and hiding out with my dad right now, but that's not going to help alone because sooner or later, he will be found out. And these people that he's dealing with apparently are kind of dangerous, and my dad is scared that something bad might happen to him. This is where I come in, he said that he needs me to lend them some money to pay off their debt so they can start afresh and my dad is living off his salary right now. He expects me to help them out with the money. Since my business is doing so well, he thinks that it might not be such a big problem for me as it might be for him. So this is all he said, there was no apology for the past, and he pretended like we had always had such a cordial relationship. So there was not even a hint of remorse in his tone, and it really pissed me off that he just expected me to help them out because he had called me. So I got really mad and I told him that he could knock on other doors and beg them for help, but he was a fool to expect anything out of me. So then I hung up and blocked his phone number. After that I got a few calls from an unknown number and I figured that it must have been my brother, so I blocked him as well so they would not have any way to access me. It's been two weeks now, but I haven't been able to shake off the guilt and I just feel really bad right now. So as a matter of fact, I have been feeling really weird about my decision to not help them, despite having the means to do so, ever since I blocked them. I feel like I still have the opportunity to do right by them, but I don't know if they deserve it, and I'm really confused about what to do right now. Ida for not wanting to help my brother after my dad refused to invest in my business three years ago because he had already spent his life savings on my brother. Update 1. Hey guys, thank you so much for the response. I have decided that I'm going to sleep on this for a couple of more days and think about what to do instead of letting my emotions get the better of me. So far, I hadn't spoken to my mother about it because I didn't want to stress her out. She had cut my dad and Eric off around the same time that I stopped speaking to them, but I know that she worries about my brother as well. She can't help it, she's a mom. And I know that if I told her that my brother was in debt, she would get really anxious about it. But I just had to talk to her about this, so I told her everything and surprisingly, she said that I had no reason to help them because they had never looked out for me or had my back. It would have been a different story if my father and my brother had apologized to me for how they had been mistreating me my entire life, but they didn't even do that, and it was the bare minimum. So I really had no reason to feel sorry for them, because Eric had dug this grave for himself, and now he could lie in it. My mother told me that she would have been worried about him had he been any younger but he's in his early twenties, and it's not like he didn't know what he was doing. He screwed up, my dad allowed it to happen by encouraging him to be the worst in his entire life, now the two of them could clean up this mess. I thought it was great advice even though I'm not sure what I want to do right now. I'm still going to think about it, but honestly, my mother has a point. This is my hard-earned money and I don't want to just give it away to a gambling addict. Besides, I don't even know if they were telling me the truth, or it was just a story that they made up as a ploy to get cash out of me. Honestly, I wouldn't put it past them, because all things said and done, I'm a lot more successful than they had bargained for, and I'm sure that it's not easy for them to accept this. So of course they will try to do anything in their power to screw it up for me. Update to hey, so I made that post last week. Yesterday I decided to do some digging to find out what was going on so I could make an informed decision and not deal with the constant guilt of hanging my family out to dry. I know that they did me bad and stuff, but I am a paranoid guy and I just wanted to make sure that nothing that bad was going to happen to them because I don't think I would be able to forgive myself if it did and I would hold myself responsible if something did happen. So I thought that I would pay them a visit and check out what's up. I went over to my father's house, but to my surprise, I found out that they had sold that house around three weeks ago and a new family was already living in it. So I spoke to the neighbors and found out that the house had been on sale for almost a month apparently. The realtor had made a huge sale, and my dad had received a substantial amount of money because the house that they had been living in was apparently in a prime location right now and was worth quite a lot. But this was three weeks ago, and my dad had already received the money by the time he called me, so I could not understand why he felt the need to ask me for money as well. 
So it was confusing and I had no idea what to make of it until this morning when I received a call from my dad's lawyer, who told me that I was going to be excluded from my father's will because I had apparently failed the test that he had set for me. You guys are reading it right. They were not in any real trouble, but my dad was just testing me to see if I would have their back, and on the basis of that he would include me in the inheritance. He had sold the house because he was moving to live with Eric, who had recently finished his residency, and since he wanted to wrap everything up here before he left, he created this little test for me. I can't even imagine what kind of screwed up mind would think that this is an acceptable thing to do and I'm honestly glad that I failed his little test because I really don't need his money. He can disappear off the face of the earth tomorrow and I still wouldn't care because I had been caring a lot in the past few weeks and that got me nowhere. So, no more of that. Gosh, it's still mind-boggling how insensitive and psychotic the two of them still are. I think some people are just not capable of changing and think that the world revolves around them. I'm just glad that the business is doing well, and I will probably not need to rely on anybody's inheritance for the rest of my life if my business continues to grow at this rate. But the mystery had been solved, and there was no reason for me to worry. It's just sad because now if something actually ever happens, I probably won't even believe that. They are pathetic, I just absolutely have to say that. Update 3, hello. So this update is coming almost a year after the last one, and I'm happy to tell you guys that I am engaged now. I met my future wife last year and I know that getting engaged after being together for just a year is too soon for most people, but you know what they say, when you know, you just know. And besides, I have known my fiancé ever since we were kids. She had moved away in the middle for a bit, but now she's back and that's how we reconnected last year and started dating almost immediately because we had wasted a lot of time and we didn't want that anymore. But the update is not about her, as much as I would want to continue talking about it. It's about my dad and my brother's reaction to the news of the engagement. For some reason they felt the need to reach out to me via email and inform me that while they were happy for me and my fiancé, they would not be attending the wedding, it's because they think that it's inappropriate for them to be present at an event where the host doesn't even like or respect them. So they wish me the best, they will not be attending any of the wedding festivities. My mom, my fiancé, my friends, and pretty much everyone I know read that email because I forwarded it to them, and we had a good laugh about it. It was bold of them to even assume that they would be invited, but nevertheless, it's good to see that they haven't changed a bit and still think that the world revolves around them. At least it keeps us entertained. That's for sure.